Hi, I am Matu, and in this video I am going to change some keyboard switches, specifically of this keyboard, the Keyboardio. I got the Keyboardio some time ago because I really like unusual designs, and most importantly, I wanted an ergonomic keyboard with mechanical switches, and that was the one that I found, and it really appealed to me. It was an, a crowdsourced project. It took the developers some time to, to ship them, but they actually made it, and I think it's a really cool product. It took me quite some time to get used to the keyboard layout. It took several weeks until I was able to normally type on it, and I was still making quite some mistakes. And, well, it is quite an unusual design, and I think it was worth it. So in the beginning I was overshooting uh, keys a lot, especially like the B key, uh, because, yeah, it turns out with this keyboard I don't have to move my fingers as much, and yeah, by now I really like the keyboard layout. It really helps me type and keep my wrists in a natural position. However, for me personally, I think the force that is required to press each key is just a little bit too high. So I really like the keyboard layout, but the switches, they require too much force for me personally. Also, by now I figured out that in mechanical switches I like linear switches, and uh, these have a tactile bump which I don't like as much. A friend of mine also owns a keyboardio, and he is also not 100% satisfied with the force that is required to press the switches, and he actually suggested to try to uh, switch out the key switches on the keyboard. And so I did a little bit of research, and after a while I decided to give it a try. So I ordered a bunch of mechanical switches that sounded like I would really like them, because they had a linear profile. But yeah, it turned out they were not compatible with the keyboardio, so they wouldn't fit on the PCB of the keyboard because the pins were in a different position and also I would not be able to fit the keycaps on it because the keycaps have a different mounting thingy plastic thing in there. I then reached out to the keyboardio developers who are really helpful and quick to reply and they pointed me to, to the kind of switches that I needed for the keyboardio. And since I wanted a linear layout with uh, with little force required to press them, I decided to go with the Matthias linear switches. After some more research, it turns out that actually someone has already done this. Someone has already changed the switches of their keyboardio because they also didn't like the force that was required to press the switches. And the interesting thing was they didn't change the whole key switches. So a key switch looks like this actually, they didn't change the whole key switches, they just changed what's inside the key switch, the mechanisms themselves. Which would mean that I wouldn't have to desolder all of the switches on the keyboardio, um, but only have to replace the mechanisms. This is what a key switch looks like from the outside. So we have a clear casing here, which is nice because the keyboardio actually has LEDs on its PCB. So through the whoops, through the clear casing, we can see the LEDs shine through. On the top, we have this red actual switch on here, where the keycaps will be mounted. On the bottom, we have these two uh, pins that are used to solder the key switch to the PCB and to open it up on the sides here which is a little little bit difficult to see we have these little plastic clamps that we can pull apart carefully if we do that real careful we can actually separate the top part of the switch from the bottom part of the switch and we can see first thing that comes apart is this little spring that pushes the key back up when we don't press it, press it and then inside we have two pins that's one and the other one just fell down it's down here and on the opposite side opposite side of the pins we have this little metal thing which defines 
our switch profile. So how how does the force feel when we press it? And we can see this um, this part here is straight. It's linear, and that's where the linear feel of the switch comes comes from. Whoops. Ah, well, it's gone. Um, and then finally, we have this switch part, and that's all there is to it. Now let's open up the, the Keyboardio. The Keyboardio actually ships with a screwdriver that already has the required bits to unscrew all of the screws of the Keyboardio. And let's open it up and see what it looks like inside. This is what the open keyboard looks like. The key switches are actually soldered to the circuit board down here. And in addition, there is the second plate above the circuit board, the base plate, that makes sure that all of the switches are in the correct position. The keycaps actually come loose with a, just a slight pull. And this is what the key switches look like. Let's remove all of the other keycaps. Here we go, all of the keycaps are removed. And wow, this looks really dirty. Let's clean it up a little bit. This is much better. Here is a key switch that is mounted to the circuit board. Let's see if we can crack it open. Bending the clamps to the sides and let's see if this actually comes loose. Here we go. Inside we see the spring that pushes the, the switch back up if you don't press it. And the top part has this little mounting plastic for the keycaps and inside there's also a little metal plate and this one isn't straight like the linear one it has this little bump and that's responsible for the tactile bump as well and this is why we're switching out the key switches we don't really want that The other half of the switch, there are also the pins. They stay put because they're soldered to the circuit board. Now switching out all of them takes quite some time, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit. And we are almost done. Let's see, so all of these red switches have already been changed or switched. <laughs> um, only these two gray ones remain. And since I have a little bit more experience now how to do it, I'm gonna show you guys. So yeah, so I already showed you that these switches have these little clamps here. I've just been using my fingernails to kind of loosen them a little bit, so just on, uh, pull on them with my fingernail on one side, try to you know, lock it in there so that it's a little bit open. You can maybe see here, just a tiny, tiny bit open here. And then do the same thing on the other side and try to get the thing out. And here we go, it is loose. We can remove the top part. This goes away. Don't lose the don't lose the spring here. So this goes there as well. And we're done with this one. Then we need a new red linear switch. We do the same thing here. 
use the fingernails by the way it pays not to have extremely closely trimmed fingernails here so just a few millimeters uh, worked fine for me for me I was lucky that I didn't have very closely trimmed fingernails at the moment and then some of these switches open really easily like this one some go a, a little bit harder so let's see this we don't need this bottom part at the moment let's put that to the gray switch we don't need these pins because the pins are already inside um, inside the keyboard anyway so inside the old switch so let's remove these two there we go and what I've been doing and I've been actually for installing it I've been actually pressing this with my index finger like this so that it's in the pressed position and then angling the keyboard let's see if this is visible on the camera and trying to center the spring here such that there's a little plastic round nubbin and in the press position it's easier like I, you, I can even test a little bit if it sounds and if it feels correctly and then just press in firmly it clicks and then make sure that all of these little clamps on all four sides are actually in and this one looks good it's done okay up to the last one oh never mind I forgot something uh, the old switch we're, we're not gonna just leave it open like this yeah so we have all parts to make a new old switch so we we have this a plastic casing with the uh, uh, yeah with this gray switch thing in there we're going to replace the old pins like yeah the, the pins with the ones from the new pins so these let's see this little bit darker and bigger part is very easy to put in it there is really only one way this can fit and then there is a smaller part which is also a little bit lighter in color and this actually needs to go right between the wall and the other pin and this can be a little bit tricky but it's actually not too difficult so there's also actually only one way this can go in and once they're in they should be approximately the same height this one actually isn't let's see Maybe it's in wrong. Let's try again. Okay, there we go. Approximately the same height of the pins and then they should be in correctly. Okay, now we're missing the spring. Let's put in the spring as well. I like to put it on the, on the part that is being pressed. So the gray or the red part and then um, put in the the bottom part of the switch last so let's see where are the parts where the pins need to go and maybe you can see them a little bit here so just try to fit that and see that the spring is perfectly centered and carefully close and make sure it is closed on all sides okay there we go now now we can do the last switch top part and spring goes out new linear switch will be opened we don't need the bottom part we do not need the pins from this one let's take the keyboard and replace the old mechanism with a new one nice everything's in and we're done with the keyboard now let's just put together this old switch here this non-linear bumpy switch so the, everything is nice and cleaned up there we go spring the bottom part and we're finished 
Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually test all of the uh, all of the switches if they work. So I'm just using a cheap multimeter here. Um, and this, so we have just this beeping part. So if there's, if these two uh, electrodes touch, they beep. And if there's something metal in between and this touches both of them, both of both sides of the metal, it beeps as well. And we can test the switches. We just hold um, the electrodes to the pins and if the switch is not pressed it should stay quiet and if it is pressed and press am i pressing the right one if it is pressed okay this one actually seems not to work perfectly let's try the next one just to see if the technique works yeah okay this seems to be correct so if i press the switch it beeps if i don't press the switch, it's silent. Perfect. Um, yeah, so this one, that's actually the last one I inserted. So I guess I made a little bit, it doesn't feel right as well. So I'm gonna take this bag out and put it back in and yeah, then put the keyboard back together and see how it works. Alright, so that was me replacing the switches on my Keyboardio Model 1 keyboard. Uh, it actually wasn't that hard, so I tried it out a little bit after I switched or after I yeah, after I replaced all of the switches and I really like it. Actually, the W didn't work, the W key didn't work as well uh, right after I uh, hooked it up the first time to the computer. But uh, it, uh, it was an easy fix, so I just took the key apart again and it turned out that the two metal parts that are the actual switch were touching all of the time, so it was pressed all of the time. And after putting it back together, it worked flawlessly. And I really like the new key switches. I think I'm gonna be very happy with them. And yeah, so if you if you have a keyboard with that you really like, but you're not super happy with the switches, you can give it a try to replace them with switches that you like more. Unfortunately, I didn't measure the exact time that I that it took me to replace all of the switches. Uh, I did it all in an afternoon, and I was also busy with like filming and setting up. So I guess yeah, it was a few hours. I don't have exact times. Um, but it's definitely doable in an afternoon. Um, it's a little bit hard on the fingertips, so from the pulling off the keycaps and opening the switches and using the fingernails to open up the switches, it's a little bit unpleasant, so it might be a good idea to stretch the task out over several evenings, but it's definitely doable in a day. All right, that's it for today. I am Matu. See ya.